I'll take it. I'll take it from here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, what a nice audience! Friday yeah. night getaway time. Great. We got a good show for you now. By the way, uh, Governor Bill Clinton from Arkansas was on the show uh, last night. You were missed him by about two minutes. He just finished. <laughs> <laughs> we got him even after he left. Uh, before I start the monologue, I should mention that uh, Surgeon General Coop says a good laugh a day is worth an ounce of fiber. <laughs> Michael Landon is on the show tonight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, star, of course, of Highway to Heaven, which has been on what, about four or five years? Highway to Heaven, of course, is where you end up if you're carpooling with Cher's boyfriend. <laughs> He was uh, named Driver of the Year by Suzuki Samurai. <laughs> Apparently, he said he wasn't trying to drive into the car, but the judge gave, me, gave him a fitting punishment for trying to run down a photographer. What he did, the judge uh, strapped a, poiler, a Polaroid camera around the guy's neck and threw him in a jail cell with Sean Penn. <laughs> so anyway, sure. no, no, come on, don't. And they had a news conference yesterday. Did you see it on television? Cher and her, her boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah. Cher kind of blew it. You know, if she'd played her cards right, today she'd be the first lady of Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> Honor that doesn't come often. A uh, little item in the paper today. Politically, not much going on until the Republicans uh, start their uh, telethon. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but they are refurbishing the Dukakis ancestral home. And do you know where that is? Yeah. It's on the Greek island of Lesbos. <laughs> now, the Greek island of Lesbos is famous for other things besides Dukakis. It has the... <laughs> it has the... the highest bachelor suicide rate. <laughs> Now, Dukakis yesterday was campaigning in Secaucus, New Jersey. Now, he has got to do well there because apparently there was a problem there during the primaries. It seems that a raucous uh, Dukakis fracas cost Dukakis the Secaucus caucus. I don't, I'm not sure about Dukakis's campaign slogan. There hasn't been a Greek in the White House since Agnew. <laughs> uh, now, George Bush is trying to uh, update his image, you know, not to be a, a wealthy preppy, you know, just a regular guy. So today he goes into McDonald's and ordered eggs McBenedict. <laughs> now, the Republicans that came up with an interesting strategy today, they said that Lloyd Benson, running for a vice president, and the Texas Senate at the same time is a conflict of interest. Now, I've heard Benson speak. It's a conflict, but there's no interest. <laughs> it's, it's good news. Listen. Here's some good. How many of you are, have trouble spelling, are not good spellers? Be honest. There, all right, the phone company is now offering a toll-free number you can call to have a word spelled in case you don't have a dictionary around. 
Isn't that nice? What you do is you dial 1-800-Colloquialism. <laughs> I was in a supermarket today, going through the line. <laughs> I went, went there just for this joke. And I... <laughs> That's where they have all the, uh, the tabloids, you know, next to the three, three cell batteries and the, and the Tic Tacs. Uh, and I saw the headline in the National Enquirer this week. And the headline article was, How Eating the Right Foods Can Increase Your IQ. Now, isn't that risky for the Enquirer? I mean, they could lose all their readership. <laughs> Tomorrow uh, is the anniversary of uh, Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance. He was last seen. <laughs> he was last seen uh, July 30th, 1975. Disappeared 13 years ago, and the body has never been discovered. Even the letter from Ed came back. <laughs> Some, somehow I expected more out of that one. <laughs> well, the M Emmy nominations are out. Do you understand the? Emmy nominations at all, some strange categories. Oprah, Geraldo, and Phil Donahue are all up for the weirdest topic for an afternoon talk show. And Geraldo, I think, has the edge. He came up with women who look like Noriega. <laughs> How can they keep those shows? Uh, did you, have you ever watched Geraldo? I saw Geraldo this afternoon, another big show. He interviewed a sterile medfly who was wearing... <laughs> was wearing a teeny little hood over its head. It's weird. I've, I have never been able to figure out the Emmy categories. I mean, where else would the Emmys? Would Zubin Mehta and Placido, Placido Domingo be in the same category as Rusty the Bailiff from People's Court? <laughs> Nominee for Best Remake is Jessica Hahn. Did you know that? <laughs> Don't tell me I don't know our crowd. <laughs> Here's a fascinating item. A new report came out today, an exhaustive study. Uh, linguistic historians have discovered the least spoken sentence in the English language. And the sentence is, that's the banjo player's Porsche. It's weird, but it's the least spoken sentence. Uh, well, he... <laughs> you know the circus is in town? Yes. When's the last time you went to the circus? A year ago. Why do we... <laughs> Damn it, you did it again. I thought you'd say maybe 30 or 40 years, but you went a year ago. You arrived a little daughter at home. Oh, that's right. see the circus. I'm gonna go see the circus. Yeah. Brings up an interesting question. What, what does the Indian rubber boy carry in his wallet? <laughs> There was a, a, a... Did you know that a... You know that a tragedy struck the circus today? Two Volkswagens collided, killed 117 clowns. <laughs> They're just having trouble there. Then they had a scandal today. The Human Cannonball Act, the Flying Garbanzos, we're in town. <laughs> and Papa Garbanzo was stopped by air so airport security for carrying a concealed nephew. It was... <laughs> I, did you know I once went... <laughs> I once went with a circus performer? No. Yes. I did. It was very strange. Lydia, the tattooed lady, and she had the entire California freeway system <laughs> tattooed on her entire body. And just my luck, after I sprung for a big dinner, I found out the, the Baja off-ramp was closed for the night. <laughs> then, 
Thank you. Tonight, tonight we have we have Mr. Michael Landon, as I mentioned. We have we have a gal I love to hear sing, Katie Lang and the Recline. Is there some pollen? Is probably the malathion. Yes. Air spraying, which is harmless a, to humans, but cover your car. What a hot crowd we have tonight. Oh. Great. It's true. Our, anyway, tonight we have uh, Michael Lynan is here, Katie Lang and the Reclines, and a young man, Smokey Tennyson, who uh, is a columnist at the age of 10 or 11. What were you doing at 11? Writing Not newspaper? doing that, no. I wasn't either. Interesting picture I want to show you here. This was taken several weeks ago at the United Nations Security Council meeting. And you know, the president sent George Bush over to answer the, uh, the Iranians uh, thing about the, the shooting down of the airliner. And in the picture, Vernon Walters, who is the delegate to the UN, is handing a note to Vice President Bush. Now, this is the paper that appeared in the New York Times. And there is the actual note that he handed over. Now, right. you know what the New York Times did? They got a high resolution camera and enlarged the picture to see what was on it. And this is the result. No, I'm not joking. No, no, I'm not joking. This is what was on it. Apparently, it was a response. And it says, if you want to throw 14-year-old kids into battle in a bloody war, that's your business. But when you attack merchant ships and plant mines and neutral matters, so forth. That was the suggested response from Vernon Walters to Bush. Mm -hmm. Isn't that intriguing? Right, they were yes. able to take a newspaper. You get that. Well, we found out that if they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> That's right. We have. We took a number of photographs of well known people in situations where they were either having a note or a little something in their hand. And we, you, you'd be surprised how many of them are perfectly legible. Here's one of the departing Attorney General of the United States, Ed Meese. Now, do you see in his left hand there? And it says, don't say anything, wink if you're guilty. <laughs> Now, here's a picture of the Tyson Sphinx fight. If you notice Mike Tyson there, right in his trunks, we enlarge that and it says, You got the IQ of a turnip, you spineless wimp, sign Michael Sphinx. <laughs> here's a picture of uh, Brooke Shields dancing with George Schultz. You see that? See that little note there? The note says, You're a very tall, very beautiful woman. Do I have any lettuce on the top of my head? <laughs> Across these rather quickly. <laughs> All right. During a session of Parliament, Margaret Thatcher passed a note to her aide. You see the see the note there? You see Mrs. Thatcher? She's saying, "You know how much I paid my hairdresser today? I want that pigeon shot." <laughs> Would you believe in the famous photograph of Washington crossing the Delaware? You know what it says? It says, "General." It'll be better for everyone if you do it over the side. <laughs> That's right. Our high resolution camera. Pee Wee Herman in his, uh, in his, from his new movie with his girlfriend handing her a note. And it says, honest honey, it's just a nickname. We didn't realize we could even go back, so we found a baby picture of Ed McMahon. <laughs> you, it's hard to believe this. There's a little baby picture of Ed. You see? What it says in the left hand is, here's poopies. There you are, with our high-resolution camera. <laughs> okay, we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> It's always nice. It's always nice to have in your audience 500 Surgeon General Coops. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. 
Okay, my next guest has been on television for over 25 years, and we're getting pretty tired of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's a, I can say that because he's a good friend, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, no, Michael Land has been on television forever. Fine actor, director, his TV series, Highway to Heaven. We'll be on NBC this fall on Tuesday nights at 8. Would you welcome Mike Landon? <laughs> 25. 25 years? Or 25 years. You didn't hear the introduction? No. Good, good, good. <laughs> I said you've been on television over 25 years. And it's oh, yeah, been at least 30, hasn't it? Over 30? 30? Yeah. Over 30 years. You mean Bonanza came on? 19, well, that wasn't my first job. What was the first one? First, first show I ever did? Yeah. I played a, a guy who couldn't speak named Casper Hauser on a show called Telephone Time. I, sure, had, I didn't know that. I had to bleach my hair white. Total reversal of what I'm doing now. I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this isn't your natural color? Oh, give me a break. Come on. <laughs> I've been here white, you know? You gotta see me. I'm gonna come on one night with the tin foil bags. You're gonna love it. Well, we'll talk about that. I look like a giant antenna. It's I did not so. <laughs> and then Bonanza came on in 56, 57, I guess. Bonanza was on in uh, 59, I think. And, uh, yeah. yeah. We haven't seen you for a while. You haven't been here for a year or so. Well, you know, you ridicule me a bit about my clothing, so I waited for the alterations to be done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> did I say something about your clothes? No. You didn't really. You, you, I don't you, go out a lot. You dress, you, know you dress comfortably. Very. Shoddy, but comfortably. <laughs> yeah. So what have you been doing since I saw you last? Outside of the hair, of course, which takes a certain amount of time. Uh, working along, uh, you know, I'm not a, I don't socialize. I go out I very, every once much. in a while. Well, because, you know, you, you and I are in the same boat in many yeah. ways. I mean, you, I like to go out and have dinner every once in a while, which I might do on occasion. But you gotta find the right place. Uh, it's hard for people to understand, but you wanna find a restaurant where you can sit and have dinner with your wife and have some quiet. Yeah. I mean, I tried it this week and I had a, a rotten experience. It's bad, eh? I went to a restaurant. I liked the restaurant. Last couple of times I went in, a lot of people, right. you know, the usual thing. You're trying to just talk. So my wife called up and said, Can you, we'd like to come in. Can you give me a table quiet, a little away from everybody? Corner somewhere. Yeah. So she said, We'll do the best we can. Owner and his wife, very nice people. We go in and had a great dinner. Nobody was there, very quiet. Sat and talked to the owner and his wife for a while. I mean, we just loved it. It was one of those evenings that's perfect. We go outside. My wife and I get in the car. I start to back out. I run over the, the owner's wife's cat. <laughs> what? I run over the owner's wife's cat. I, I hear the scream. I jump out of the car. I see what appears. It's dark. You can't, I can't find the cat. Very upset. The owner's wife is crying. You're sitting there with a straight face like, you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what no, you... Let me explain to everybody what I'm talking about, because yeah. you don't know the upshot of this. I know. I have no idea. Johnny ate in this restaurant, and he went to back out of the parking lot and ran over the owner's wife's cat. It was you. <laughs> don't look like you don't know. I am here to explain to you that the cat is all right. What are you talking about? You ate it. <laughs> you ate in a restaurant in Malibu. Yes. And as you were leaving, you backed up and ran over the owner's wife's cat. Oh, gee. <laughs> Does it? No. I, God, this happened just last week. It happened Monday, I think. Monday? <laughs> yes. Well, I know he came out looking for a cat. Yes. Are you, because are you had, telling me? He had watched you run over it. Are, are you telling was, me? The woman was very, very upset. I, I just want you to know that the cat is fine. Well, I remember him they coming out and said, saw... did you see my pussy cat? And I said, no. <laughs> Obviously, my car was well, covering the cat. Your car was covering it. Did you have to come on national television and tell people that I because backed the, over the man's cat? Because I want you to know, and she wanted you to know, that the little puddles were not blood. 
<laughs> he would run over the cat's I, tail. I, I know what you, the, And the cat ran off. But the cat she, is she all right wanted, now? She told me to tell you that the cat was all right. Thanks. The cat is totally fine, except at 11.30 at night when it hears Johnny. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. I said, where is this man going with his story? And now I, yes, Monday night, the man says, have you seen my cat? And I said, no, I saw him a moment ago. <laughs> okay, but the cat is... The cat is... Well, I'll send him a, a, a get well card or something. That's a, that's a damn shame. That's embarrassing. Embarrassing. Oh. Did you... You, you, would, you would do that. Now, just, I'm going to talk about the hair. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you admit publicly that you changed the color of your hair. Well, what how am I going to not admit it publicly? I mean, they saw me in four movies with white hair. What yeah. You? You see, your normal hair is, is gone. What, an what angel? Like? I just go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm brown. Whoa. Well, what was you said? Somebody came to your house once and you were in the doing the thing? Yeah. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, what happened was I had the flu. I wasn't feeling well. And I used to do my own hair. I've told you about that. Yeah. You know, I used to put this stuff on. It washes off. So, and you're in hotels and you got brown towels. <laughs> so you leave the bottle of the stuff so they don't think you're some kind of a strange person. <laughs> so, so I decided to... <laughs> so, so, I, so I decided to get it done professionally. You, know, you got to get streaks. Women know. you got to put on the tinfoil bags and the whole thing so that some hairs are lighter than sure. other hairs. So anyways, I got the flu. The two gals are doing my hair. My wife's sitting there. They're all talking. And I'm feeling so sick. I'm, I feel like I'm going to faint. Well, I do. I faint. I fall on the floor. <laughs> so I'm a hero. So I jump right up again. And I say that was a joke. Because I, I'm embarrassed that I fainted in front of these people. Right. So I sit back up. Well, when you faint, you shouldn't jump back up again. Because the blood. Because your blood, woo, like this. Well, now I don't know what happens. But I wake up and I'm on the floor. And I, apparently I passed out again, hit yeah. my head on the sink and fell on the floor. And the gal was doing my hair. They stare like this, they reach down, touch me. And she says, I don't feel his heart beating. <laughs> so my wife calls the paramedics. Now, now I gotta explain something to you. When the word goes out, when the word goes out celebrity. that a celebrity may be kicking off, every truck within a hundred miles comes. They want to be the one that found the body. They're standing next to it. We tried to save it. <laughs> I got three cars out front. The lights are going. People are banging on every door of my house. Now I'm awake. I know she's calling. I said, tell them to go away. I got tinfoil bags yes. in my head. <laughs> I want them to go away. Meantime, the other girl is trying to clean this brown spot off the rug, you know, before it ruins the carpet. I can't do that. I want them to check you. I said, I got the flu, give me a... Now, here they come. An army comes upstairs. They put a thing around your head with oxygen to go to your mouth. I'm sitting there, I'm fine. I said, look, guys, I'm fine. How do you feel? I said, I'm embarrassed. I mean, how do I feel? I got brown stuff running down my face. You've just destroyed a piece of equipment. It's got brown glue and stuff all over it. He said, you've got to go to the hospital. I said, I'm not going to the hospital. My hair will overcook. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd have had pictures of that. Oh, I really. It was it was cute. It was. Nice. We'll be we'll be back in a second. <laughs> the cat is all right. The cat is all right. Okay, KD Lang is here tonight. KD will be at the uh, Universal Amphitheater in Los Angeles on July 30th, and in the Maritime Provinces of Canada from August 5th to the 12th. This is their latest album called Shadowland. Would you welcome KD Lang and the Recline? <laughs> So 
expect me.